Hi, I'm Donovan Keith, and I'm a product manager at Maxon working on the Scene Nodes project. Welcome to Scene Nodes for Technical Directors, and in this video I'm going to be talking about working with selections. Now, this video is recorded in Cinema 4D 2024.3, so if you don't have that version, uh, things may look a little bit different. So, um, I want to go over a few different things. The first is how do we make a selection? How do we visualize or see what that selection looks like? How might we store that selection? And how might we remove that selection once we've stored it? Uh, we will be talking about different sort of pre-built selection modifiers and make it very easy to make a selection. We'll be talking about manually constructing a selection with something called a selection string. And we might even get into, and no promises here, uh, creating a custom self selection um, using an array. Um, so again, this is uh, scene notes for technical directors. I'm going to assume some programming knowledge uh, as I'm as I'm talking this through. So um, the, if you feel lost, that's that might be why. So let's go ahead and uh, start by adding a cube to my uh, scene here. It's just a simple nodes mesh. We're going to add a cube node, and to my cube, I want to add a few segments. I'm just going to add three by three by three, and I'm going to connect this to my geometry output, and I can do that by dragging the wire or just by tapping Q on my keyboard. Now that I've got my geometry uh, here invisible, I'm going to add what is called a selection modifier. And selection modifiers, if I double click here, are available under the geo selection heading. Um, and we've got a pretty good list of them. And you can also create your own custom geo uh, select or selection modifiers by uh, using this uh, group nodes as node selection. That's uh, how you can easily create one of those. So I'm going to add a random selection and just add it here onto uh, my, my mesh. Now, the first way that you might elect to make something uh, visible to see what's going on is to make it editable, go into the polygons mode, and just see which polygons are selected. And uh, this is your active selection. This follows the same style of selection that you're used to in classic C40, where you would just use a tool to select something, do something to that thing. So back here in um, scene nodes land, uh, another option that I have to, to visualize this selection, and certainly a faster one, is in my viewport to go to Options and choose Polygon Indexes. Um, and I just need to be in Polygon mode, and what I'm going to do, or what I see here, is the indexes of my selected polygon. So you don't see this indicator unless the polygon is selected. So this is the easiest way, probably, to see your selection. Um, Another simple technique is to just perform something like an extrusion. So once you've got something selected, by default, the selection is going to sort of act on that which has just been added. And now um, I have extruded out those polygons, and I can kind of see um, what's happening. A little bit of offset variation allows you to see them distinctly. So uh, if I'm in a rush, I'll just add an extrude. Nice, simple way. Um, there's Another method uh, that I'd recommend, which is to store your selection and uh, store it with a name and then attach a, um, a material specifically to that thing. So the easiest way to do that is to uh, double click right here, choose store selection. And I'm going to store my selection, my um, my active selection here with a custom name. Um, let's call it um, active underscore polys. And now I see I've got a tag on this object called active polys. And I can now apply a material to this. So I'm just going to go into my material manager, create a material that's sort of like a selection orange. I call this selected polys, come over here, and I'm going to restrict it to the selection I just made, or active polys. Let's call it um, active polys. So uh, now back here in my nodes mesh, I can easily see uh, what has been selected and what has not yet been. In fact, I'm going to turn off my polygon indexes. So. Um, that's the basics of selecting with the existing modifiers and choosing store selection. And in fact, if I wanted, I could skip a step here. So some of the modifiers, not all, but, but most, now have a store selection field, which just kind of does this in one uh, fell swoop. So I'm going to copy this name right here. And I'm going to paste it in where it says store selection. 
and I'm just going to make this uh, my output and nothing has really changed. Uh, and that's because I've got one uh, here and the same thing happening here. So it's sort of a redundant thing. It's just sort of being saved on top of itself. Now, um, that's how you can uh, store your selection. Let's talk about, or rather how you can store it and how you can visualize. So I'm going to just write uh, store as active polys just to make my uh, life a little bit easier so I know what's what. And then I can say connect to me to visualize your selection. Now, uh, I've got this random selection. I can adjust the amount of selection. So we can see that selection updating dynamically. And some of our selections will also have this invert option, which will just invert what gets selected. Um, selections exist in uh, different modes or components, right? So up here, you see we've got points, edges, polygons. Same thing for selections. You can create a point selection, a an edges selection, a polygon selection. Polygon selections are the only ones that are super easy to visualize. Um, and you just have to be careful that you are matching the mode here, right? I'm selecting polygons and I am storing as polygon. So that's the important thing here. Um, next up, uh, what I want to do is go over the selection string inputs. So how can I construct a selection uh, maybe a little bit closer to uh, from scratch? And for that, I'm going to uh, just sort of disconnect this, hide it off down here. And I'm going to use the select node, which is just a simple node that all it does is uh, select what I tell it to. So the selection string in the select node has a lot of different powers, um, but it allows you to basically exactly specify what should be selected. And there's a few different ways you can do this. You can do it by index, so I can type zero. And the polygon with the index of zero, which we can check right here, um, gets selected. If I change this to one, now that one is selected. If I type in uh, zero to 20, it's gonna select zero to 20. Um, you can type in with a space and let's say I do uh, number 30 here. 0 to 20, comma, 30. So you need to have a, a comma uh, in between or I believe, I believe if you break the line, uh, that also works. So just a, a plain space doesn't work. 0, 10, 20. Uh, that will not work. Uh, you need to put them on entirely separate lines. 0, 10, 20. And 0, 10, 20. Also works if you have a comma in between. Now, if I right click, I can choose show help, and that's going to give me a full list of the different uh, things that I can use. Uh, and we can talk about a few of the key ones. So uh, the first is default. So with default, if nothing is selected on the input, then everything uh, gets selected. And this is the same as how our modeling tools in Cinema 4D work, right? So if I take this and I perform an extrude uh, in polygon mode, uh, nothing is selected, but if I extrude, that is still happening to each of them. Let me just turn off preserve groups here. You see that uh, all of them are effectively being selected. But if instead some items are selected and I do my extrude, only that selected thing is going to get modified. So um, that is what default does, is it adds a selection for, um, if nothing's selected, it selects everything. Otherwise, it returns what is actively selected. So if I did, for example, my random selection, I'm going to turn off my store as. And now we see that uh, select is basically taking the exact same selection, right? So it's just kind of passing through. Um, I can call this active. 
and it's going to be the same thing. However, if random is not selecting anything, no selection passes through. So if I change this to uh, default, though, we will see um, all orange. So my recommendation generally is to, to one, just give a, a bit of thought to whether you want to have this sort of default workflow or not. And in general, I find that um, it's better to be explicit. I choose active if I want only the active ones, uh, or I choose all if I want to be explicit and have all. Um, I might choose even or odd. And that is going to give me this sort of um, filtered view of this thing. So that is how you can use these selection strings. Um, we've talked about visualizing selections. We've talked about storing selections. Oh, we, we, yes, we've used store as. And let's talk about how to remove a selection. So let me just do a random selection here. And it's stored as active poly. So what happens if I remove selection? Uh, I can remove, but I need to know the name. So I type in remove select or active polys rather. And now that selection has been removed. It is no longer um, a stored selection. We see that these polygons are still selected, but they were not successfully stored, or they were stored, and then that uh, stored selection was deleted. So um, last but not least, selection arrays. How would you go about um, constructing an array uh, and using that as your selection? So. Uh, I can take my select node and it has a special input. I can choose add inputs. Not all nodes have this, but many do, and it is a selection input. And the selection input um, accepts what's called an index selection. And this is an array of indexes that we want to include. So I can do a build array. I'm going to change it to int for index, and I'm going to connect this here. So uh, we see that 0 is pretty selected. Uh, let me get rid of this remove selection. Great. So uh, we've got a 0, got a 1, got a 3 or 4 or 5, 6, 7, as it goes. So uh, that is how you can custom construct a selection is just by building an array. And you can get an index array from string. And you can type um, 1, 5, 6, 12, that sort of a thing. And that will generate this index array for you. Um, let's see what happens with 13, 14, 15. I'm curious to know if it is clever enough. Uh, 13, 14, 15. Yeah, it's just a straight uh, adaptation of those items. And you can also remove selections, done, 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 done. So that is the rough introduction to selections. Let me know if you have any questions.